Welcome back to Med Audio. I have received a lot of uh, requests about integrations of four subs, especially subs with uh, different specs, so mixed subwoofer brands or models with Direct ERT. And if you watched my first video tutorial and review about Direct Art, you probably saw that some users had some difficult moment to integrate this type of configuration, either in the same group or split across different groups. As you probably know, last Marantz and Denon processors can offer uh, four sub outputs and the ideal scenario is for identical subs in one art group with infrasonic enabled if you can. That gives art the best chance to optimize your room assuming good placement, which still matters to excite different modes rather than the same ones. But what if your subs are not identical? In my case I have to per listen D12S and I love to go to four, but budget, space and wife say no. So I'm going to add two Buhart subs 10, compact, slim, sealed 10 inch subs that punch way above their sides. Please check my dedicated review, cause they are excellent for the price. In this video, we are going to test two type of uh, integration. The first one is with four subwoofer outputs, uh, using the four subwoofer outputs directly coming from the AV10, so my Marantz processor. First, we are going to keep all subs in one group, even though they have different specs, and then we are going to split them uh, into different groups. And I will show you why it doesn't behave very well on Marantz and Denon. Next, we are going to use the sub 10 true output to pair each sub with a satellite in my case the surround speaker to make them effectively full range resulting yes in four subs in my environment while using only two subwoofer output of your AVR so great if your receiver doesn't have four subwoofer output by the way huge huge thanks to Buhart to sending here the subs 10 for complete this test. So let's get started. The first things that I did was uh, verifying that the subwoofer 10 of Buhart, uh, that by the way, I placed them closer to the surround. So verify that they were measuring well. I used uh, Room Echo Wizard. If you watch my previous video, you probably know that I like to do small uh, pre-equalization corrections around 35 Hz. is a big, big, huge peak that, uh, that I have here in, uh, in my room. So generally I give a minus six, uh, minus eight dB to correct this before running the calibration with Direct. Both Perlisten and Buhart are coming with a dedicated smart app. So it's very easy going to correct these, uh, these frequencies. Uh, of course, if you know which one it is, but actually you can see it also on Direct Art. On the Buhart Sub 10, you can also apply three different tuning, one with a very low uh, sub-bass extensions, one is a all-round, the third one is a max SPL. I went with all-round because uh, it's the one that in my environment is giving the, the best results, but feel free to experiment here. And with that done, I rerun my 13 uh, mic positions, Direct recommends at least nine for art, but I have found more, more points help. And then I basically apply all the fine tuning that we saw in my previous uh, video. Things like center channels and high channels uh, should not support other groups. Please check the earlier video if you missed why. And then I created uh, three exports. On slot one, all four subs in one art group by default. In slot 2, same as slot 1, but with infrasonic on for the subgroup. Nice bonus, uh, it is removed the 20 Hz bump we saw in the previous video. Honestly, I don't know why, but it's nice to see that. And on slot number 3, I split subs in two groups. Group 6, the Perlisten D12S with infrasonic on. And group 7, the Buhart sub 10 with infrasonic off. Makes sense because per listen can play lower, so I let infrasonic only with them. As you can see, as soon as you split the subs into separate groups, 
those subs can still support other groups, but other groups can no longer support them. And the target house curve control for the outside subgroup disappeared. I don't love this behavior uh, either. Sounds to me like a DSP limitation, but that's it's how it's work. So now we have three tuning uh, to be compared. As always, I tested with my favorite Blu-ray scenes. The difference between configurations were not, not night and day, but uh, they were real. With the sub split in two different groups, um, was a bit cleaner and tighter the base, but also less voluminous and pressurized. The room was less pressurized. With all subs in one group, I got more immersions in the impact but a touch of low-end smearing in very complex and dynamic scenes, nothing dramatic. So I was genuinely torn. Each configuration has pros and cons. To break the tie, I tried a third approach by keeping the two per list and the 12S as always, uh, directly coming from the AVR subwoofer output, and turn my surrounds, so the Buhart S400 MK2, into full range channels using the Buhart Sub 10 high pass features. It will take you a couple of uh, XLR or RCA, of course, uh, cable um, uh, to add, but it's not uh, difficult. So basically from the AV10 surround pre-out, you enter in the subwoofer LFE in, and then from the sub-10 satellite out, you have to reach your power amp input, in my case the amp-10, that will feed the surrounds. If you have an AVR with uh, in internal uh, amplification, you will need an external amp to do this by setting the surrounds to pre-out. Then in the Buhart app, I enabled the high pass and set the crossover around 100 Hz for both subwoofer and satellite. Why 100 Hz? Uh, basically, there is um, a bass trap uh, in, my, in my corner that is giving, um, is absorbing uh, some, some energy around 80 Hz. And since the subs are physically close to the surround, crossing a bit above uh, 80, 80 Hz uh, is not a problem. Both Room Echo Wizard and Direct confirmed this. So it's not plug and play, it will take you a bit of time, but not impossible, of course. And here you can see the surround extensions shifted from about 30 Hz down to 16 Hz in the room, effectively making the surrounds behave full range with better control and headroom. With this type of setup, you um, keep most of the impact of the all in uh, all subs in one group, gaining the cleanliness of the split configuration, adding better integrations across channels. Overall, it's the best balance, uh, in my opinion, spongy, controlled and immersive with fewer trade-offs. I don't know if you haven't seen yet, but in the Netflix Frankenstein from Guglielmo del Toro, there is a scene around 1 hour 25, 27. I'm speaking about the explosions with Frankenstein trapped inside. In that moment, you get an incredible blast. The first one hits from behind my left shoulder and the seconds come from above as everything collapses. The feeling is now insane. I honestly don't think I have ever experienced my surround so punchy and big, creating this level of impact and immersions. They definitely feel um, more alive now. If I had to rank the T3 approach in my environment, the winner is absolutely surround as full range using the sub 10 high pass filter. Second, uh, I will probably put uh, all subs in uh, one group and last, different subs in different groups. I didn't enjoy it so much. In the end, I think Marens and Denon couldn't had um, handling these uh, different sub specs better with uh, direct art. I mean, at least with the EV10 or EV20 that are the flagship, I was expecting something more more flexibility uh, with the internal DSP. That feels now like cinema 30 or 40 regarding the performance in, uh, in a subwoofer uh, setup. I get that probably they, they wanted to unify all the firmwares, but still hurt a bit when you spend a lot of money for such a flagship model. By the way, I am happy that I found um, a sort of workaround, right? That let me outsmart the DSP a little bit and 
is working. Unfortunately, not all subs have an IPES um, output. And if you don't, I recommend to let all the subs in one group. Now I want to hear from you. Do you prefer all subs in one group? I mean, if you have different subs or separate groups. If you can, please try also this, uh, this last setup uh, that I give it to you. Please let me know what you think about it. Drop your questions and results in the comment sections down below. And thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.